dames en heren. Ik wil u ook nog even melden dat jullie kunnen stemmen. Hm? Voor de mensen, het is uh, euro D3. Maar net zoals euro's, zo'n festival, kunnen jullie stemmen. En ik ga u een rekeningnummer geven: BE142900 5029 1053. Per stem. 10 euro graag. En droef zou droevend zijn als u uiteraard meerdere keren kan stemmen. En we zouden u dringend vragen van meerdere keren te stemmen. Tot dan doet deze dingen. U kan dus stemmen. Vanaf nu kan u stemmen. En de volgende gast is... Even kijken. Dat is een zekere heer. Nimmers Sandbleiter. Yeah! En dat is een man die zeer filosofisch in het leven staat. Het is een reiziger. En een theatermaker. Dames en heren, geniet ervan. Good evening to you all. Good people. It was a little over three weeks ago that I uh, met a fellow poet by the name of Volkart. He's here right now, he does some brilliant things in Druf, Telix poetry. And he asked me a little over three weeks ago, what will you be thinking of three seconds before your performance. <coughs> Mankind has every reason not to love me. made sense as a whole. So here I am, being here or there, or wondering whether about whom or what to care. Seeking reasons rather to let the whole show go than to revalue the situation and purify the soul. Unable to set a beating heart, I tend to question taking part, being the hermit of fate's skin forced to walk the unchosen path, I reassure myself that life lives a dream. But when I sleep, this anchored fate, free from pain and joy and hate, then I wonder why I always wait for morning dew to moisten my brain again and again and again and again. If life is supposed to equal beauty or beauty is supposed to equal life and if it's essential that we strive for beauty in order to survive then I wonder why I always dwell the shattered pavements near the buildings that hold my personal hell. Am I motionless? Do I fly? <laughs> Sink? Float? Or flow? 
don't tell me. Is there a difference in breathing the same air? Don't fool yourselves. We're all God's missionaries in a hardcore band. A solid mass of rock and roll penetrates the skin. Bones vibrate. The soft parts of the body become diffused and mix with those of others. Liver seeks liver with mutual interests. Hearts align in multiple chambered lofts. Bowels map out semi-liquid cities where organs dwell. And after communion, the stage divers float over a sea of heads to eventually sink back into the mass. Trashy noises rip off the last of the remaining tissue and splatter them on the dance floor where they lie as leftovers on a meat dish, still trembling as the sound stirs their insides. Don't tell me, is there a difference in hearing the same thing? But then, as if the nostalgia of the missing flesh would lie deeply embedded in one's most trivial, almost lucid thought, the flesh-craving spirit seeks to bite the meat it holds, and once again, with no option of choice, you are squeezed into the too tiny mold of time. But since you were never asked to take this ride, that forcefully blends you in the carnal fear of social sin, your immortal knowledge will be blurred. And once again, nostalgia seeks the hidden void of what what's never there will always be heard. Thus, taking pain and giving in and fading out and fitting in a twisted crowd is what keeps the mold, the time mold, from being hollow. <laughs> of course, one pleads for life and death. So, if you can't give me a new name, maybe a new body instead? And the doorman said, stop, you, you go. You get, you get in, you get into, you get into yourself. And I say, will you come with me? And he did. And when he opened the door, I found myself upon a ridge, overviewing a valley, only lit by one beam of a full reflective moon. Rearranging all colors to cyan and silver strokes, the first dew pixelating as diamonds on cyan meadows. But this was not to prove a fairy tale sight. It was a gruesome night all filled with grief, who gave troubled hearts just no relief. The gates of hell will open soon to leave behind a splintered moon. And so I will walk this merry path to the infinite flames of wrath. To my salvation I will burn, for unshattered flesh I shall not be earned. For if all beauty comes to end, I'll Burn the good times I have spent, and may this not be called a sacrifice, but mere event that stopped all cries. And as dawn flaunts its violent lust, it cracked. The, the one so peaceful crossed, and up it came with acid fumes, devouring sunlight as it consumes all light from within the sun's score and then nibbling outward cleaves no more than a nebulous radiance only to show a deep black cone 
in poisonous glow that reaches through the starless sky, its rear in the deepest depth it lies, impenetrable, its insect-like shell, leaving me no words to describe this cathedral of hell. But then, as if to show its hidden bait, the mist dissolves to show a gate with surface smooth, reflective black to mirror one's distorted image back, and then thousands of pilgrims, all in queue, line up before its mirror view to wait until their patience proved that even hell's gate can be moved. <laughs> Impatiently they break the line pushing forwards onto hell's huge shrine, but as it opens, it only trims the first hurdle of six pilgrims. And those left behind pass nervous sighs at, uh, at, uh, when a touch of panic blurs their eyes at the thought of losing all their chances to behold the mystery the dark enhances. They fail to see the wicked crime of hell's doors opening a second time again to swallow no more than six. Each time, no more than six, it picks from an ever-increasing impatient crowd, and since none of those inside has yet come out, I tend to doubt their presumed illumination and fear the worst of their sacred destination. And as I stand and overview, Suspicion grants that these fears come true. The air fills up with smoke so thick it invades the lungs and makes you sick with the archaic stench as we remember the Holocaust since twin September. Driving death's familiar looks to an utmost stage, a carriage appears from behind the pilgrim's cage, displaying bones, still smoking flesh, it lifts my resentment to sheer excess. But in beholding this horror, still my amazement grew as it did not seem to affect the waiting queue. These people moved, though can't be moved, from the moles their fate has proved. They're vainly awaiting a hopeful bliss, expecting the Jews' front will grant them this. Those at the back wait tense at the front, those in the middle wait patiently and confront. They've almost reached their goal to be merely pushed into a hole. And at that point I considered what I only am a wandering soul twisted in a scam. And what I should do in, in making fate <laughs> come true is patient and wait at the back of the queue.